previously on Final Fantasy 16. Oh. Fuck you. <laughs> Sorry, you whispering. And now back to Yoshi Peak Fiction. Hello! Sneak up B! Back with some more Final Fantasy 16. Now, officially, the officially official released version. No more demo for us. It's time to see where this freaking adventure can go. Huzzah! <laughs> it literally just unlocked like like two minutes ago. I hopped right straight into that. I'm like over here looking at the clock like, come on, come on. Left us in such a cliffhanger before. It's been tough waiting a week for this. But yes, when we last left off, Clive and friends went and battled with a bunch of dirty, dank, doo-doo goblins. And even a Marlboro, which they called something weird like Marlo or Malbo or something. And it was fun. Then we came back and drank ourselves drunk. Except for Clive, because he doesn't drink. He just hangs out outside and acts all whimsical. Unfortunately, the festivities don't last long as the worst guards ever outside just immediately die. We get invaded with the help of some inside folks. Joshua and Clive's father dies right in front of Joshua, causing him to go crazy berserk and turn into the Great Phoenix. Yay! Oh, but he's out of control, boo! And also, Ifrit's here for some reason, what the hell? With Ifrit seemingly killing Phoenix and in turn Joshua. But come on, it's the freaking Phoenix, right? They're all about coming back from the dead. I'll buy that for a second. And it turns out that uh, Clive's dear old mom was basically the one to sell them out to preserve the bloodline or something, though she wasn't really playing for Joshua to die. With Clive being spared and made a soldier, I guess, somehow? I don't know exactly how that's gonna work. She's like, you're just training your son to get strong enough to kill your ass, but sure, lady, you know what? You do you. But that seemingly marked the end of the prologue, so I wouldn't be surprised if the next spot that we uh, hop to is probably the moment where we, potentially the moment where we started the game, or continuing from where we started the game, or maybe some spot like after his training or something. But I think that's like the next point, right? That's the next uh, age that we're ch we're hopping to, which I think is like his mid twenties, where he's seemingly like a mercenary. I, I don't know. I don't know exactly sure how he got from being a soldier to a merc parting this merc group. So, but uh, anyway, last episode, uh, Jacob Scott six four six two said, "I uh, want to explain the great delivery from Ben Starr, the voice of Clive." Ben said he poured the loss of his own father, who gave him his first Final Fantasy and brought him into the series into Clive as a way of processing and channeling his own loss, which in turn let Clive save his life. Wow. Damn, dude. Wow. That's that's pretty powerful. Yeah. From everything I've heard just from, you know, promotional material, as well as, you know, the bit that we've already played, the voice acting in this game is fucking incredible. Holy shit. Yeah, the voice acting is insane. Wonderful acting chops for, from all the actors, as well as some wonderful voice directions. I really got to give it to them. Not to mention just everything's so cinematic and beautiful, like really is like experiencing this just incredibly grand epic movie, you know? That's also a video game, which by the way, this game also has received a number of glowing reviews. It has like an 88 on Metacritic or something, which does not surprise me. And while I've sort of generally avoided the reviews because I kind of want to judge it for myself, I think the biggest thing that I, I imagining that potentially critics might have against the game is potentially the side content. Because so much of this game does seem so much more focused on a a sort of more linear narrative that it might be that the side content itself is feeling lacking compared to previous entries and maybe even the rpg aspects which i was sort of also getting from some of the coverage we got but i could be wrong uh, that's just sort of my what i'm i'm sort of thinking potentially and not that it's going to stop me from having a good time with this game because this i can already tell this game's just going to be a fucking roller coaster ride but it is something i am going to be sort of looking out for as i get further in and get to the point where things open up and i can do other things aside from main story i also be curious to see if all the like side stuff is like voice acted too i hope so but if it is then it's not that big a deal but jacob scott thank you so much for your uh, enlightening comment and also a huge shout out to clive's voice actor for uh doing such an amazing job with this character as well as all the other voice actors in this game and it's that reason you are coming to the day but okay guys here we go time to see where things go uh, after the demo's prologue and how our boy uh clive might be doing all right here we go again Cl uh continuing with my uh save from the demo uh, claim redeemable items. Initial content is available for redemption. These items can be claimed from the system in the main menu. Okay.
Yeah, so continuing right after his friend got fucking nailed. Thirteen years later. Year of the Realm 873. Oh, what? They call him Wyvern. Wyvern, a slave soldier for the Holy Empire of Sandbrek. Now in his 13th year of servitude. Oh, no. That's exactly what he... Okay. No, it is, it is exactly what he is. He's not a merc. He is a soldier for the fucking empire that his mom's basically switched sides for. Though drafted as a frontline infantryman, the magical might granted him by the Blessing of the Phoenix quickly saw him promote to an elite squadron of assassins, where he was assigned to the moniker by which he is now known. Their latest mission, to descend into Nysa Defile, where a bloody battle rages between the Iron Kingdom and the Republic of Dalmechia, and take the head of Shiva's dominant. Welcome back. And what about you? His name is Tiamat? Ooh, the bastards. A unit of Imperial Army assassins tasked with taking the head of the Iron Kingdom's dominant, Warden of Ice and Vessel for Icon Shiva. All of its members, including its leader Tiamat, are bearers, branded men pr pressed into servitude for their ability to wield magic. Gotcha. And that, so that's why he has the mark now, because he is, I guess, a bearer. Uh, the Nice of Defile, the, a deep, arid valley located in the eastern part of the Melchia Republic. During the Battle of the Twin Realms in 865, it was the site of repeated skirmishes the Iron Kingdom attempted to make incursions into Delmechian territory. So Titan, the Warden of Earth, of whom Hugo Kupka is the current dominant. He takes the form of a stone-skinned giant whose granite fists shake the earth with every mighty pummel. Titan's dominant awakens among the peoples of the Delmechian deserts. The recipient of his strength being granted great power and status by the Republic in return for a commitment to protect the nation in times of war. Interesting. Okay, and Shiva. Who, who is the dominant of this? The Word of Ice, whose appearance on the battlefield makes her enemy's blood run cold. The Iron Blood sent Shiva against the Repub Republican forces in Nice of Defile, where she dueled against Titan, the Icon of Earth. We actually don't know. It's not telling us. It's keeping it all secret and shit. Sorry. What's our situation? Let's just say Shiva and Titan's little spat hasn't made things any easier. Splat. Ow. And? It's as you thought. The Crusaders have sounded the retreat. Then we follow. We're down a man, Sergeant. If we return without Shiva's head, our fate will be no different from Beast's. I'll take my chances with the Iron Blood. At least then I might die fighting. After you do, that is. Well, I've done a really bang up job so far. Not today. Oh, which I mean, we've done it's literally jack shit. No dying. Now, if you don't mind, we have an army to chase. Okay. Awoken. A chance encounter. New iconic abilities. The iconic abilities Scarlet Cyclone and Heat Wave for the Phoenix are now available for acquisition and upgrade in the abilities tree. In the main menu. Do not forget that once acquired, new abilities must be equipped in the gear icons tab. How do they expect us to kill something that can do this? They don't. Only the girl holding its leash. Cool. Yeah, I noticed that last fight I had in the flashback. And like, I think I went from like level 7 to level 10 or something. I got like three levels. Which I guess is because I just to, to get to prepare me for when I got older. Okay, let's see. Ooh, okay, so there's Rising Storm, or Rising Flames, and now Scarlet Storm. Spin quickly, creating a ring of fire that burns all enemies in range. Well, that looks sick. Got some new gear, too. I guess I'll go ahead and learn Taunts, the one building I haven't learned yet. Uh, flames of Rebirth. Summon a massive pillar of fire that burns all enemies caught within the flames, while also partially restoring Clive's HP. Well, that's dope. Uh, heat Wave. Summon a projectile dispelling wall of liquid flame. 
before launching several deadly shockwaves. Wave force is amplified upon dispelling magic. Sure. Is that what I have to equip? It is. Okay, so I have to choose between the rising flame and that. Hmm. I think I'm not going to stick with what I have. I think the, the rising flame move is good. Projectile 1 is a little weaker, but you can be used from a distance. But I'm going to be kind of getting in close anyway. Imperial Infantry Blade. When a bear dies in service of the Sambraqua's Imperial Army, it is more likely his sword on his body will be tree from the battlefield. That it might be provisioned to the next unwilling volunteer without additional cost to the crown. Wow. A crude strip of leather fitted with a pocket iron buckle. The belt is provisioned to bearers of the Sambraqua Imperial Army with the understanding that it will be lost when the poor light eventually falls to an enemy blade. I'm actually liking all this deep dank lore I'm getting from like the equipment here. The Bracer. Having deemed shields too costly a resource to be wasting on mere bearer assassins, the Sambraqua Imperial Army now provides their frontline pawns with a pair of simple iron bangles that might stop an enemy blade if the bear can raise his arms in time. Okay, so we're now down here. We started over here. So chance to counter. The year is once again 873 and Clive has returned from his reverie to the chaos that smolders in the wake of Shivantan's terrible counter. Tiamat reminds Wyvern of their mission and that there is no escaping the inexorable fate of the branded. Uh, branded soldier. Bearers forced to fight for the nations that enslaved them. Able to cast powerful magic yet entirely disposable, they are often placed on the front lines in battle or assigned to highly dangerous scouting or assassination missions. How nice of them. Damn. Pretty ass game, I tell you what, Bobby. It's a pretty ass game, damn I. Ooh, a shiny. Mine. <sighs> well, the old trails are gone. It'll be hell finding a way out. Do you think a retreating army and their dominant will fare any better? All the blood on the rocks. Damn. This guy got fucked up. All the ice left behind by Shiva. By the flames. By the flames. By the gods. I think I'm actually going to adjust my uh, items here. I've been using stone skin. I think I'm going to use strength instead. More power. <laughs> the sound the ice makes. Impeccable sound design. Jump point. Did you hear that? Down there. Sounds like a bunch of bonnets. So, Titan has knocked the fight out of our iron blood friends. Where are the rest of them? That can't be the main host. Wait. Uh oh. Think what? Thanks, our friend. It's Jill. Our fortunes have turned, Sergeant. It's her. The dominant. Are you certain? Oh. The crystalline orthodoxy is a backwards faith for a backwards people. In the Iron Kingdom, they teach that dominants are unclean aberrations, born of blackest sin. Oh, shit. She's actually the dominant for, uh, for Shiva? Jill is? The Iron Crusade, the fighting force of the Iron Kingdom, ultimate command rests with the king, who issues orders directly to the commanders of each of his battalions. Iron Blood soldiers generally prefer heavy clubs and great axes over swords and their lighter weapons. This rather brutal approach is indicative of their overall attitude, which has earned them a reputation on the continent as savage, if somewhat primitive warriors. Oh, whoa, 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 sorry, sorry, I saw there was one down there. Dominant. Those with whom sleeps the power of an icon, though they look and think no differently to any other man or woman, they can not only cast elemental magics without a crystal, but also transform themselves into beasts of world-shattering strength at any moment, a quality for which they are honored and worshipped and feared the realm over. Now to perform the rites of priming, and I see many. We end this quickly. Clive is probably not... I don't know, does he know that she is the, the dominant of Shiva? Shrinkscott! Adionineer Sagarit! Yeah, it's definitely her. Data! Must be idle! Prime. Ah! What a 
salvation now, Kim. I'll add Scully. Let this be the end. Avis. No, Clive. It's Jill. Don't do it. You don't recognize her? Understood. Oh, the music. Oh my god, yes. Power of a god. Ugh. Oh god, she's still here. She got the ice moves. Jill. Shit. Gotta remember how to play. Why are you only targeting me? Ah! There are other people here, too. Can't really get closer. Oh my god, really? Ah! Okay, here we go. Wait, how do I do the... Oh, there we go. Ah! I was like, I don't remember the moves again. Orders, Sergeant. Stop talking and move. Fucking icons. They're icons. fucking icons. Even fully oh god, oh god, oh god, oh Jesus Christ. I will not have their blood on my hands. Leave me be. Uh, uh. Oh god, oh god, move out of the way. Man, I'm getting fucked up. Ah. She has some moves, Jill. Uh. Ah. Ba 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 ba. Best friend killed. Frozen tear. Uh, and she fought and she shed tears of ice which shattered on the bloodstained earth below. Ooh, we do have crafting in this game. That's cool. <sighs> ah, fuck. By the gods. Do I have blood in my hair? Is she dead? I don't think so. Well? What are you waiting for? Finally, are you recognizing her, dude? She's got a pretty distinct look to her. No. No, that's... Not you. Not here. Oh. I'll bloody do it then. Uh-oh. Get fucking nailed, bro. Uh, fuck. Oh, fuck, mate. <laughs> I 
I actually thought Clive was gonna kill him. We've got company, Wyvern. Yeah, no shit. What the hell are you doing? Lord Ohida Vegra! Get your ass over here and help me with these bastards! Jill Warwick. Born a princess of the Northern Territories, Jill was made a ward of Rosaria after her homeland's incessant raids were quelled by the duchy. She was raised in Rosalith Castle alongside J Clive and Joshua, who came to love her as a sister. When she waved the brothers farewell on the day they departed for Phoenix Gate, little did she know of the misfortune that awaited both them and her. Aw. All right, keep your pants on, team. I'm coming. Trying to beat neat ass. Dominant. I know her. Know her. I love the finishers. Look around you. Do you think any of these animals care? I need you here. What do you think I'm doing, dickhead? Thank you for letting me uh, beat on your friend before uh, turning to fight me. Uh, uh, uh. What, what, did that say shit? What the hell was that? I don't know what that achievement was for. <laughs> shit! Now that that's done, I won't ask you again, Wyvern. Take her head so we can be done with this. No. Oh. I, I can't. I won't. You would betray the Holy Empire? Well, fuck them and betray. fuck you. I don't recall ever pledging allegiance to your emperor. My service may have been bought with this brand, but not my loyalty. I just fight to survive. And you think I don't? The Empire will have our heads if we return empty-handed. So if you won't take hers, I'll have to take yours. I told you, Sergeant. I'm not dying here today. And neither is she. Oh, music. Let's find out. I'll show you this is the power of a god. Oh, yeah. Ow. Shit. Uh, uh. Oh yeah! Have you forgotten who plucked you from the front lines? Who trained you? Who gave you a name when you had none? You speak as if we don't bear the same brand, son. I've always had a name, and I've not forgotten it. Still clinging to the past like a torn blanket, then you will die as you should have 13 years ago. Uh. Uh. This time, woo, yeah! I'll show you what the power of a fucking phoenix can do. No. -uh. Here we go. Nothing, uh. No one. And I will not fall by your hand. Oh, yes, you fucking will, sir. Uh, uh, uh. Uh. Ow! By a traitor's blade. Ah, oh, by a traitor's blade. 
Damn up, bastard. Lobo me the fuck up. Arr. Thank you. Ooh, I got some meteorite. And now why right? Now bleh. Dead? <sighs> yeah, I think he's dead. That's not good. May just use some Phoenix bullshit? <laughs> Holy shit. Blow them the fuck up. By the gods. By Zeus's beard. Ha. <laughs> cool. Who the demon lord was that? <gasps> it's Targal! This way. Uh, say it! Bloody wind. Well, come on then. Torgal has back! Puppy has gotten big! Big puppy. Fuck. Fuck. Yeah, fuck me. Anything new? Tiamat dead. A bearer's service of the Holy Empire of Sombra, Tiamat is the leader of the Elite Assassin Squadron to which uh, Wyvern is assigned, the Bastards. Their latest mission is to take the head of the Dominus Shiva. To descend, they infiltrate the Nice Defile, where the forces of the Republic of Domekia and the Iron Kingdom are aligned against each other. Though none of his know his true name, rumor has it that the man known as Tiamat was born a scion of a noble Sambroqua family and, and abandoned to his fate after his power awa powers awakened. Dominant of Shiva and Kla's childhood friend. In the depths of the Nice Defile, the two came to blows at the orders of the armies that enslaved them. Jill fighting to defend the priests of Iron Kingdom, Clive obeying the Empire's orders to take the head of Shiva's dominant. Exhausted from her tilt with Titan, Jill came close to falling to her assassin's blades, but was spared in the last moments when Clive's memories of their time together came flooding back, and he finally recognized her. Ah, oh, fuck me. Come here, baby cakes. Let's go. Come on, Fluffy. Do you remember your doggo, Clive? Oh, guys, this crazy bitch. Donny, the fuck is this? Uh, the kingdom of Willowed. Or w Willowed? Willowed? The sole surviving nation in Ash, or Ass. Willowed has its capital at Stonehur, home to the Mother Crystal of Drake's Spine, a warlike land its considerable military might serves to keep neighboring countries at bay. Well, Willow does maintain a, no a notional alliance with the Dalmechian Republic and Southern Storm. It is very much a marriage of convenience. Hmm, okay. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. Benedicta Harmon, commander of the Kingdom of Wol Wolods, elite intelligencers, who sits by her leech's side at the highest tables of state. Most recently in their negotiations with the Dalmex at the Zernitra Stronghold. But Barnabas is not the only one with whom she shares a special bond. Benedicta also has eyes and ambitions for Hugo Kupka. Which was Hugo again? The king? I think I think that was the guy we saw before at the table that was talking with her, right? So really, so she, so Barnabas, who's the, who's the Titan for, or the the dominant for Titan, has ambitions for Hugo Kupka. So to like become queen or something. Hugo dear, my proud desert lion. Would that you had taken care when chasing the hare? I expected more from the mighty Titan. You put the Ice Queen on her back, no doubt. But you'll have to work harder if you're to claim this prize. Lady, the 
thunder. We'll be hearing more soon enough. You always were a fucking snake, Sid. This game, Sid! Gather the men. We have work to do. It's always gotta be a Sid. And from the little bit I've seen of this Sid, he seems badass as fuck. <laughs> he seems super sick. He's got a great voice. Can't wait to hear him talk more. Jill. Is it really you? From the name thing still says Wyvern instead of Clive. Oh. Torgo remembers him. And who's this fine hound I see before me? A fine hound who saved your life, that's who. Torgal. Hey. His name is Torgal. You two acquainted? Well then, you won't mind taking him off my hands. Funny. I'd always pictured you as more of the chocobo type. Clive Rosfield. Come now. Fleet as flame, fierce as a wildfire. That there was the blessing of the Phoenix. I'd heard rumors that you'd survived, but I never paid them much heed. <laughs> Calm down. I didn't come all this way for your handsome mug. <laughs> Torgo! Clive's faithful friend, now fully grown. After the tra tragic events of Phoenix Gate, Clive believed that Torgal was lost him forever. However, their paths were to cross again <laughs> for Square Enix merchandising and plushies. Some 13 years later, when Torgal's new master, Sid, came to Clive's rescue in the depths of the Nysa Defile. Despite their long years apart, the two knew each other as if not a single day had passed since their separation. Zodolphus so Telamon. Cornered by a battalion of Iron Kingdom Crusaders in the depths of the Nysa Defile, Clive thought his end was nigh, until Sid appeared and spirited him and Jill away to his secret hideaway in the Deadlands. Uh, on the other hand, she seemed worth muddying my boots for. None the worse for wear. Still, might be best to get a second opinion. Back her up! Oh. Not another step. <laughs> I mean it. Well, I'm not about to leave her here. Not one with a warm bed waiting. It's all right. Oh. Yeah, that guy's voice is like smoked barbecue. You're welcome to join us. You do want to help her, don't you? <sighs> Uh, Sid, if we aren't back soon, none will have our heads. <laughs> none. Goats. Goats. Did you get added, goats? Yep. One of Sid's trusted allies, an initial giant who has a warm word for everyone. Hodor? I'll explain everything once we're back at the hideaway. Come on. Yeah, oh, man. Aw. Oh. Let me pet the doggo. You better let me pet the doggo. If you don't let me pet the dog, I'll be mega pissed. Tears of the Kingdom won't let me pet the doggo either. Why? God damn it, why, Nintendo? Cool. Okay. Heading for the center of the world. It's generally just kind of like one really big continent. Well, sort of. I guess this is sep a little separated by a little bit of water. It's also a giant hole over here. The hideaway, the withered remnants of a once verdant valley long consumed by the blight. One would have to be either extremely foolish or extremely desperate or an extremely desperate fool to make this wasteland their home. Yeah, so like the blight is like this weird, like they talked about it before. I haven't seen like a lore post about it, but it's like some kind of seemingly some kind of virus or something plague that like spreads across the land and also seemingly maybe kills people too. 
Not exactly sure what it is or where it's coming from, though. Central Storm! The Deadlands. The, the rocks in, like, the geography of these areas is so cool looking. Almost further now. It's so detailed. But we're in the middle of the Deadlands. Keen eye, you. The blight suck this place dry. Meaning no trees, no birds, and no magic. But it also means no neighbors. The last place anyone would think to look. Home sweet home. Okay. Oh, good. It's much nicer inside than on the outside. Hideaway, Central Storm. Hey, how's it going? Hello, wench. Oh, it's a little moogle. He's so fat. This place. These are fallen ruins. Well, we didn't think they'd mind. And it keeps the black from our lungs. But how do you survive without magic? How does anyone? Hard work and a bit of nouth. You must be starving. We grow them here, believe it or not. Hmm? Suit yourself. <laughs> More for me. You're back. Ah, tell you. And this is the dominant. How cold since we found her. I was hoping you might give her a look over. All right. Goots, get her upstairs. Get. Well, none will... Don't fret about Karen. I've taken care of her fee. All of it. She's the best healer this side of the belt. You've nothing to worry about. If you say so. The Deadlands. Barren wastes bereft of ether, where no life stirs and magic is all but unusable. Here, both earth and water are stained black, preventing any sea from quickening. In recent years, the blight has spread even more widely, displacing whole nations before it, driving once peaceable fauna to violent desperation, leaving de silent devastation in its wake. Sid's hideaway. A refuge hidden in the blighted lands of Central Storm, from which Sid operates his secretive community of freed bearers. Ah, okay. While survival in the Deadlands is widely considered impossible, a combination of near indestructible fallen ruins and considerable ingenuity have led to the establishment of a safe haven where those who rally to their leader's cause are only just about able to eke out an albeit meager existence. The Fallen, the ancient yet highly advanced civilization whose relics can be found across the length and breadth of Valsia. The material from which these relics are constructed is far sturdier than steel and cannot be worked by modern methods. So the people of the modern day have elected to build instead and around them instead. Or sorry, inside and around them instead. Tarja, resident physiker of Sid's Hideaway. Tarja is an expert in all manner of medicines and medical interventions. Skills that are indispensable in their deadland home where they cannot call on healing magics. After Sid brings an unconscious shield back to the hideaway from his expedition to Nice Defile, she is placed in Tarja's care. Cool. Have a look around. I'll be in my soul. Can I take a bath? <laughs> the guy, the face of this game are great. Hide, hide away. He's got a smile that cuts right through you. Local map. Pressing the touchpad opens a detail map of your current area. Main scenario destinations are marked with a red mark. Okay, so we do actually. Oh, okay, great. We do actually get local maps. Good. What if I get a radar? I kind of would like to have a radar. Oh my god, it's a fat chocobo over here. Fat. Or may I ask the name of a place? The White Ad Ad De Dads? Storeroom The Faucets. Can I talk to anybody? Nah. You reckon he's a soldier then? Be surprised if he wasn't. The smell of war is thick about him. You know I can hear you, right? Fuckers. If you can read, don't let Otto know. We'll put you to work on the ledgers too. If you can read, don't let Otto know. We'll put you to work on the ledgers. 
Okay. Wise into man. Yeah, the, the lighting on the the candles. She looks crazy. Yeah, it's just like it really is one of those games that, and I I don't know how well it's gonna look for you guys through YouTube, but in person this shit looks this shit looks next gen. It really didn't when you were like when you're just looking through the videos. I was like, ah, I mean, it looks like I mean, it looked better definitely than like a normal PS4 game, but. He's got a headwick. Just working on a pet project of mine. Though she's not above biting the hand that feeds her. Nah. I don't know about the bird. Who's the bird? I damn it. All right. I was hoping we might try and solve the mystery of poor Clive Rossfield. A bearer of the San Brequa Imperial Army sent behind enemy lines. With orders to wait until it turned into a brawl, then slit the Dominant's throat in the chaos. I didn't know it was her. How could it be? And so, to save her neck, you slit your sergeants, then set your sights on the hills. Conveniently forgetting how the Empire deals with deserters. Cause with that on your chop, my friend, we both know you won't be getting far. You've fallen a long way, Lord Rossfield. <sighs> I'll not have it said that I'm a poor host. What do you mean to do with her? Do with her? Why nothing? Her life is her own now. If I wanted to use her, do you think I'd be talking to you? All I want to do is help. Dominance like her, branded like you. Of course, the realm doesn't approve, which is why we live in a cave. Yeah. And it's also why we need help from branded who know one end of a sword from the other. What say you, Clive? Will you join us? Sid, was it? I trust that you'll do right by Jill. But until my brother is avenged, I must walk my own path. Avenged. My brother was murdered by a second dominant of fire. The Phoenix is evil to win. Well, bother me. Another rumor proven true. I only stand here today because of Joshua. Thirteen years I've waited for this chance. I've slept in filth, drunk from a gutter, killed more men than I can count. You're right. The Empire will not suffer a deserter. This will be my best opportunity. My last. Which is why you should join us. I told you I'm not interested, I know. One of my scouts sent word there's a group of branded fugitives north of here, in the Imperial village of Lost Wing. Among them is one he believes to be a dominant of fire. Is he certain? What say we go and ask him? This doesn't mean I'm joining you. I'm just thirsty. Let's make ready then. I like this guy already. You'll find everything you need down in the main hall. As well as a few things you don't. Have fun. 
Cool. I actually should I, uh, probably check out my, uh, stuff over here. Do I have anything to level up? 140 points? Uh, I don't think I can actually spend it on anything. Hide hideaway. Promising sucker. Sid welcomes Clive into his deadland sanctuary, hidden deep within the ruins of lost civilization. There, Clive discovers something that eluded him for nigh 13 years. Freedom! Freedom! <laughs> hmm, interesting. So here's my, like, early theory for this, right? Like, we see a guy, right? Seemingly a, a person, a hooded figure, right? And Clive is assuming that guy is the dom the other dominant fire that controls Ifrit. I'm thinking it's just himself. Like, beneath the hood, he's gonna see that the person has his face. It's, like, just him in his mind. And I'm gonna bet this dominant of fire that they're currently looking for is potentially Joshua. That's that's my theory. Like, Joshua isn't really dead. Because of course he isn't, right? Again, Phoenix! We literally saw him revive himself at one point during the, the big fight with Ifrit. It's downstairs. Try not to get lost. Shut up. The dominant needs her rest. I'll see she's not disturbed. Okay, that's the infirmary. Is that goats? He, he's in. Oh no. <laughs> goats, was it? Perhaps you can help. Sid asked me to make ready for our mission. How does one go about that here? Uh, well, uh, there's old Nan's place. Oh, uh, uh, on second thoughts, uh, you maybe want to see Blackthorn first. A blacksmith. To the forge it is then. The forge. Oh wait, no, hold up. You'll be needing this. It's a gat. Blackthorn won't take no notice of you otherwise. Might not anyway. What'd I get? I don't know. Does it look like this room here for another bloody crate? A bloody crate! Are you Blackthorn? Surly Smith. What if I am? Well, no time for idle chatter. I'm not here to talk. I'll be accompanying Sid to Lostwing and I need you to see to my equipment. You could be accompanying the goddess Grieger to our holy bedchamber for all I care. I'm not lifting a finger for you. Is that so? Have a look at this! The contents of rum. A noisome spirit best suited to stripping oil from painter's canvas than consumption. Grants overworked in the conscripts a few rare moments of sweet oblivion on their long, arduous sea journeys north from the continent. Sure, dude. Have at it. Take a swig at this bullshit. Do you want that or not? I can take it back. Oh, damn you, coots. All right, all right. No need to be hasty. Let's have a look at you. I doubt that lot could stay a Moogle's fart. Bloody Imperials. They'd rather see their bearers dead than kid it out properly. <laughs> I'll do what I can. As a favor to Goot's mind. Alright, forging. The crafting of new gear as well as the upgrading of existing gear can be done at the blacksmith as long as you have the recipes and the proper materials. Select a highlight item from the list and press X to craft or upgrade. Uh, okay! I don't have many options here. Iron belt plus one. Exactly 12 iron fillings that I have. Thanks. And the belt, Caesar Square. You want anything else? You bring your own materials. Oh, I see. Okay. I'll bear that in mind. Thank you. He just got it for me. I gotcha. <sighs> A word of advice. Don't let Sid decide what's best for you. When something has changed in the hideaway, a notice will appear in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. In addition to stock updates for Karen's Toll and new fortune recipes for the Black Hammer, there are also notices for new quests, new miss missives, and many other things. A icon will appear in game as well as the local map to indicate recent updates. I suppose I should thank Goot. Cool. Goot. I see I'm busy here. But I ain't the cook, am I? Oh, 
What? He started reading it and then he stopped. Okay. Though if you taste it, get us brown, it might as well be. Look. Look. Sid need a smith, and I need a smithy. Call it a merge convenience. Okay, so not every not every bit of dialogue in the game is voiced. Doesn't hurt that the forge is hottest this side of hell. Or that it works without magic. I won't have no pair of suffering from me. Do anything needs repairing? Or retooling. <laughs> you bring it here. Along with your own materials. And any scraps left over I keep. Oh, and then a check mark if you got it. Gotcha. What do you want? What do you want? Uh, I need some more wire right. Oh, God, I only need three more to upgrade it. Damn it. Guess I'm going to some iron bracers. So bad. If I do say so myself. You can find iron belt later. too. Ah, the faucets. What are you gulping at, newcomer? What are you gulping at? seen a man work with his hands? Well, you best get used to it if you're thinking of staying. Jesus, okay. What are you gulping at, newcomer? Okay, there doesn't seem to be, like, multiple things of dialogue most times. Seeing as you're new, let me share a word of warning. Keep your hands out of the stores, or I'll cut them off and crate them with the others. <laughs> oh, I'm only teasing. We feed the hands to the dogs. <laughs> yeah. Nice. You seem nice. Uh, another newcomer. Yeah. You mind the rules round here, or our next chat will be through the bars. Damn, dark as fuck in there, boy. Hey, Ghost, thanks for hooking me, hooking me up. The gift worked. You have my thanks. I, uh... uh <laughs> Come on, nearly there. Or say bears or something? You, blankets, quick as you like. We make him comfortable while the bed's made up. <laughs> well, you're just gonna stand there. Someone fetch some water. I'll get the bucket. You go and see if I don't needs out, eh? Yeah. <laughs> out? Wait, me? But I don't want to, damn it. That's thing for the dirty peasants that work here. What the hell have I got myself into? What the demon lord do I got myself into, damn it all. <laughs> this guy's name is Curmudgeon. Who are they? Huh? Yep. They're freed Imperial bearers. Who the hell are you? Who the hell are you? <laughs> Shit, at this rate he won't make it through the night. Think you can find your way up them stairs to the infirmary? We need tire. Well, go on. Shift your ass. Okay, Jay is silent. Tar ya. Not ya. Ya. Was Tari the one looking after Jill? What's all the commotion? What's all the ding dong doodly going on here? Get from the border of the land and the lot. Sorry. I heard they escaped their masters. Sorry, I want to look around a little bit. Anything else going on? Hello, your studious friend. soul. Lady Tyre might be able to see to that. You may have been born a slave, but you're a free man. Now. Oh, get off my face. These apples are all foul. That'd be nice. This dang tattoo off my face. Leave me be. Leave me be. Oh, try to see here. It sucks being so fucking old, and there's so many fucking pretty people here, and I'm old as hell. God damn it all. Oh, the world. The world. Woe is me. Woe. Some weird people here. Sid once told me the blight doesn't kill the land. It only makes her forget who she once was. The she fuck does that mean? remember her purpose. All she needs is a little reminding. By fertilizing and stuff. Bearer. Person with the power to cast magic without a crystal. In Valsia, men and women who awaken as bearers are enslaved. They rock with a brand upon their cheek and use as tools. Cheaper alternative to the scarce and precious shards. The system of slavery has persisted for centuries and has become so ingrained in Valsthian life that few take pity upon the bearer's plight, seeing them as less than human. Ugh. <sighs> this whole place is falling apart. Burly bearer. 
the hottest of bearers. All right, sorry, I just want to explore a little bit. Get my uh, lay of the land. I think I saw... Yeah, I think I saw most of it. Your friend needs her rest. There'll be time for tearful reunions when she's recovered. I'm not here for Jill. You're wanted downstairs. There are injured bearers in need of attention. Well, why didn't you say so? Because you started talking. I did say so. <laughs> Actually, I think I noticed the, the mark on her face, right? It looks like it's been, like, kind of rubbed a bit. It's still sort of there, like it's left a scar, but she seemingly has, like, removed her own, her own marking. As best she can. Yeah. He's going to be all right. Yeah, it just looks like a scar. I need to examine them both in the infirmary. I don't know if it's much better, to be honest. My work's just begun. Another fine day at the hideaway. Do many of the bearers who come here arrive in this state? It's no easy thing, casting off your chains. By the time most pluck up the courage, they're already too far gone. These two here are the lucky ones. The name's Otto. You need anything? You ask me. Well, Otto, I do need some supplies. Do you now? Then Lady Karen over there will be more than happy to help you. That a wrinkly bitch over there will get you your shit. Oh. And thanks. Be seeing you. Not likely. I won't be staying. Yeah. Is that right? Well, for as long as you are here, consider yourself welcome. You helped us today. And we won't forget it. You went and talked to the nurse. That was a lot of help. Haven't met a Karen. Oh, side quest unlocked. A Karen says Final Fantasy IX. <gasps> side quest. All right, well, here we go. Starting a little taste of the uh, the side quest. Keep an eye out for the green icon above the heads of certain NPCs. These indicate that they have a quest to offer. List of current and completed quests can be viewed on the journal tab in the main menu. To accept a quest, quest objectives will appear on the to-do list on the right side, or after accepting, of the screen. Objectives for the main scenario and up to three side quests can be displayed simultaneously. Any quest can be prioritized in the journal in the main menu by highlighting and pressing X. Objectives prioritized quests will remain displayed in the to-do list until the quest is completed or another quest is given priority. Prior status for requests to be removed by highlighting. Okay, yeah. Uh, Fung hideaway facilities are now available. The Thousand Tomes, an ever-growing compendium of all things Valtia. Okay, this is... I think this is my, uh... My lore place. The Orchestrian, a personal jukebox for songs selling throughout the game, really? Both are located in the Hideaway's Eatery, the Fat Chocobo, and they can be found on the local map. Who are these people? Who the fuck are these people? I see a quest over there. I heard they escaped their masters. I heard they're a bunch of dirty peasants, I did it, right? Oh, we gotta go talk to the burly bear. This whole place who's apparently so Joffrey. But not, but not the <laughs> Game of Thrones Joffrey. That, oh, that guy's a little douche. Thankfully, he's fucking dead. Damn it. We'll be needing more wood. But if I step away to fetch any, this lot will be down around our ears. If only someone out there can find me some wood! By the God! Oh, you there. Perfect timing. I couldn't persuade you to fetch me some timber, could I? No. Sure. I'd be happy to. Oh, yeah. oh, thank you. <laughs> he said You'd very be begrudgingly. The hide away both. It takes a lot of work to keep this place standing. <laughs> More than we can manage, if I'm honest. It certainly looks like you've got your hands full. Ah, uh, you can say that again. The fallen knew their craft, make no mistake. But not even their handiwork lasts forever. That's why the walls need shoring up. Can't have the uh, vegetable patch crushed before our first harvest now, can we? <laughs> No, I suppose not. All right, where can I find this wood? Ask over at the White Ads. They'll point you in the right direction. Thanks again. I really appreciate the help. Okay, it does seem like the the side quests are voiced, though, at least. Prioritize quest! Make do and mend!
Sorry, I didn't see you there, chicken. Chicken! Where's that fat moogle? Little fat asshole. I'll go over there and poke him. Don't think I haven't noticed you stealing sips from that pot. Hello! Ah, a new face. And, dare I hope, a willing pair of hands. The fat chocobo is a demanding mistress, and we are too few to keep her on her feet. Might I persuade you to deliver a meal or two to souls in need of sustenance? Only if I get some too afterwards. For your trouble, I can offer you the contents of my strong box and my enduring gratitude. I don't see why not. Is this saying the reward is 500 bucks? Is that what that's saying? I don't see why not. Marvelous. And who exactly do I have the honor of addressing? Clive. Delighted to make your acquaintance, Clive. I'm Kenneth, and mine are the weary shoulders upon which the weight of this fine establishment rests. Now, I have three hungry customers awaiting their victuals. Take these if you would, and be careful. They're hot. Now for a minigame where I gotta balance this shit or something. It been? Place ball. Eat up, you shepherd. Your food. I was hoping it might be. Well, doesn't this look fine? Thank you, lad. Thank you, lad. You're new, aren't you? Kenneth's running you ragged already, I expect. The old rascal. Well, he did say he'd give me something for my trouble. <laughs> And so he should. We're not slaves anymore. Well met, lad. And keep up the good work. Thanks. Unfortunately, all my food is cold now because he took too long to talk to me. I'm hopping over here. Hello! Hello! Got your food here! Hello! I'm so excited. I'm just so here. hopping around with joy. Here. Oh, my thanks. <laughs> I hope you do not think me lazy for waiting to be served like a lord. Only a little bit, lame bearer. Only my former master did not use me kindly, you see. You left me half lame, truth be told. But Sid took me in nonetheless. <laughs> well, the hideaway is the home I never knew. And a mighty fine one at that. Sid sounds like an asshole. Sounds like a sack of shit. Ooh, music. Background music played in the hideaway can be changed in the orchestrion. The track list is expanded using orchestrion roles acquired from main scenario quest shops or treasure coffers. Cool. The iron blood were quick to sound the retreat once Titan turned. Ah, soothing. Here, eat. Damn it. Ugh. Stop topping, Clive. Put it on the table. Smack. Here's a large oh, book. Well. There's so much more to farming than just seeds and soil. Eat it while it's hot, asshole. Uh, your food. Just a moment. I need to finish this. I won't be a burden. I'm of no use to anyone as I am, but maybe if I can master this. All right, but... See that you eat it before it gets cold. Of course. Thank you. That's the last one. I'd better let Kenneth know. And also, Wizen Man! Lore Man! Yours is not a familiar face. Are you new to the hideaway, perchance? You could say that. Well then, allow me to welcome you. I am Harpocrates II Hyperboreus. That's, uh... Hell of a name. <laughs> Quite a mouthful, I know. Which is why everyone here has taken to calling me simply Tones. On account of the uh, company I keep. And what varied company? I'm a collector, you see. Not of bijou and baubles, but of stories. The history and culture of these isles have ever been a source of endless fascination to me. But alas, my days of wandering the realm in search of new tales are far behind me. And so I've taken to sharing that which I've gathered with all who might listen. Perhaps you would care to listen. I feel like I've heard this guy's voice before. 
When I was very young. What? The? It's so weird. <laughs> it's so weird that they they start reading it and then they stop. Or they, I guess they're being charged by the word here. So we got you started and now read the rest yourself. When I was very young, I lived beyond these shores. My father would read to me every night from the only book we had, A History of Alcia by the Moss the Chronicler. So enchanted was I by this realm of myth and magic, that when I was of age, I enlisted as a deckhand on a merchant galley, that I might see it with my own eyes. Yet, when I arrived, what I found was a land of war and suffering, darkened by the blight and the evil in men's hearts. Still, I was determined to follow in the footsteps of Moss and record what I could. And so I did, in all manner of places, in all manner of roles, until my aging legs could carry me no longer. Fortunately, Sid found me by the roadside, so to speak, and offered me a place here, where I might continue my studies, albeit without the wandering. I have compiled some new entries, if you would like to see them. The Thousand Tomes is a comprehensive compendium of Valsian lore, covering everything from basic terms to important persons, geography, and history. New information is constantly added as Clyde progresses through the story. Past active time lore entries can also be viewed here. There I we go. I can't believe you've read this particular chapter Clive tells Hippocrates of his adventures. Level me up. Oh, shit. What's I can level up my lore. Today? Uh, icon. Magical beings of godlike strength who dwell within human hosts be known as dominants, only emerging when the dominant primes. Oh. The, oh, oh, okay. That's that's what that meant. Oh, and I can select additional things. Wow. History records eight icons in total, each with unique elemental affinity. It's commonly held that two icons of the same element cannot coexist, but as none has ever witnessed all these rare creatures together, the conjecture is yet to be proved. Priming. The act of a dominant transforming their living flesh into that of their icon. Dominants most often prime during times of war, using the immense strength of, strengths of their icons to turn the tides of battle. Though it's usually done deliberately, the dominant remaining in control of the icon, even when primed, on occasion a dominant will lose control of their powers and see their icon run riot. Which is kind of what happened with Joshua, though he seems like he kind of regained control when he was fighting Ifrit. The Battle of Nysa. The Battle of Nysa was a short yet bloody clash between the Iron Republic and the Republic of Dalmechia in the year 873. Dalmechia is hoping to force an end to their long-running conflict with the Iron Blood, had convened a council at Zernitra stronghold, and intrigued their will wallow their allies to aid them in their cause. However, talks soon broke down and the Domekians were left with no choice but to rely more on the power of the mighty Titan, to whom they already owned a considerable debt. Thus was the stage set for a showdown between Titan and Shiva, the Iron Blood's own icon, in which the losses on both sides were too many to count. The Beastery. Oh, cool. The second icon of fire, a fire aspect, expected icon that emer first emerged in the year of the realm 860 when Imperial forces attacked the Rosarian stronghold of Phoenix Gate. Clawed in infernal flame, the Phoenix creature flung itself against the Phoenix, overpowering the icon with strength and ferocity never before seen or since. The Phoenix, the Warden of Fire, last seen on the night of the Imperial invasion of Phoenix Gate in the year 860, when the young Joshua Rossfield lost control of his powers. The Phoenix first awakened among the Moats of Fire, an ancient tribe who dwelled in the western reaches of Storm, and the careful preservation of the bloodlines among the Rosarian nobility ensured that its dominant would always be born in the ducal line. Oh, basic information, hidden truths. Well, that's interesting. I see the careful preservation of bloodlines. So is that why the mom did what she did? She felt like it was necessary. That's how that's how it preserves the bloodline. Oh, masked, unmasked. Yeah. So not and knowing who it is. Uh, Word of Ice, of whom Jill Wark is the current dominant. With her glacial aspect and ability to conjecture boreal boulders from the ether, Shiva's appearance on the battlefield makes her enemy's blood run cold. Gigas. As they are oft witnessed in the presence of goblins, many believe these lumbering brutes to be goblins themselves, albeit ones that have grown to prodigious size. Scholars, however, deny these claims and insist two tribes are independent in the relationship a symbiotic one with the Gigas providing protection to these slightly slight go up goblins who in turn provide the craftless giants with sundry arms and vestures such as the charnel carnicates created from the bones of their victims the spread of the blight has seen both tribes impinging on human territory with increased frequency and recent spottings have put them as close to civilization as the three reeds in rosaria morables the foul cocktail bile and partially digested prey that accumulates within their giant giant carnivorous plants bellies make their breath so spectacularly rancid that it can be used as a weapon to repel would-be attackers. 
Marbles favor more humid climes, such as those found on the volcanic island isles of the Iron Kingdom. However, the spread of the blight has driven the mobile flora to cooler areas, such as the swamps of Rosaria. Chocobos! Favorite seeds of the people of Valsia. While they are mainly bred for riding, some are used to pull wagons and some are even eaten. But the boldest and bravest are put forward to be used by the military. They are intelligent and fiercely loyal creatures that tend to tolerate only their master's attention. While chocobos are no less vigilant and will readily attack anyone who perceived to be a threat. Anyone who isn't carrying a fistful of Gyushal greens, that is. However the hell you say that, I've never known how to properly say that. So lassies. Owls capable of transmitting the thoughts of others, specifically those with whom they are attuned. In response to an ancient incantation, their lithified third eyes store these thoughts in the form of ether, allowing them to pass on as when required, though only to the intended recipient. Stolassies are mainly kept by royals, nobles, and other figures of authority for the purpose of sending secret or urgent messages and are seldom available to common folk. The incantation Omiya lost Elan to Isag Aleth can be loosely translated as my will is now thy burden. There cleft our bond shall be shall be. So essentially very dramatic and cool carrier pigeons. Oh, we got some dink dank lore going on, bro. The crystal. One of the most valuable materials known to mankind thanks to its ability to channel ambient ether from the air, allowing those with innate power to do so to cast magics. And as most Valithians cannot live without magic, its supply and distribution is heavily regulated by governments across the Twins. A given shark can only channel a certain amount of ether before it shatters, so the need for new crystals is incessant. Ah, cr ah okay, and crystal rations. Shards of crystal small to be held in the hand, which allow those who are not born bears to cast magics. The nations of the twins see such shards mined from mother crystals and distributed to the populace, so that every man and woman of good character, bears, criminals, and other undesirables not included, might enjoy the gift of magic. It is common for people to keep them for, about their persons in a protective case. Interesting. M municipal shards. Large shards of crystal that are trusted to the towns and cities across Val Valicia in order to serve the populace. Where the shards rationed out to individuals might suffice to fill a cup or light an oven, municipal shards fill wells, fire forges, and light the streets of the great cities of the Twins. This is interesting. Very interesting kind of like community and like world building they have set up here. Ether, the life force of the land and the source of all magic. The amount of ether a spell consumes depends on its strength, with those manifesting more potent forces over a wider area coming at a greater cost. Larger crystals can channel more ether than smaller ones, and thus can be used to cast more powerful magics. One might use a small ration shard to grill a fish, but require a large municipal crystal to fire a blacksmith's forge. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Magic! The art of channeling ether to make one's imagination manifest. This can take the aspect of one of the eight elements. Fire, water, wind, earth, ice, thunder, light, and dark. Or more rarely, be unaspect. Uh, aspected. While bears dominance can cast spells at will, others require a crystal to do so. Magic is a part of everyday life for the people of Alicia, making it all but unlivable when they are deprived of its gift. The First Shield. Title granted to the mightiest and most stalwart shield of the Rosarian army. The First Shield is entrusted with the personal protection of the Dominant of Phoenix and is gifted a portion of the icon's power of overflame, a boon known as the Blessing of the Phoenix. And the Blessing of the Phoenix. Here we go. Again, stuff that you guys sort of mentioned to me before, but the boon Joshua bestowed upon his brother upon... Clive's ordination as first shield, allowing him to wield fire aspected magic without a crystal. It has long been custom to in Rosaria for the dominant of Phoenix to share a part of their power in this way, performing the rite of rejuvenation upon those they appoint as their protectors that they might serve them better. I see. So that's how he's able to do the shit that he does. The brand. Basic information selection. The mark applied to the cheeks of bears across Valacia identifying them as something other than human. Newborn babies are checked at birth, those who found to be bearers being branded and taken into custody of the state. Rarely bearers evade this test, either because their parents hide them, the testers are lax in their duties, or their powers do not awaken until later, yet most do not remain unbranded for long. Media, the burning red star that sits behind the moon. Yeah, I saw that little thing. Folklore describes the media to the, the role of a message bearer to the moon, so it's common custom across Valacia to wish upon the star that one's heartfelt desires might be conveyed to the heavens and beyond. Journal of Moss. The Annals of Moss the Chronicler, a scholar of Valacian history, not, on, not only for his singular insight, but for the ly lyricism of his writing, an exceptionalism that earned him the enmity of his fellow scholars that drove him from public life. Such were their misgivings towards him that only a handful of copies of the journal were ever produced, making the tome a prized 
among, find among collectors. Balasia, a realm comprising the twin continents of Storm and Ash, over which the Mother Crystals stand timeless, stand timeless vigil. At the foot of each great cities have risen up over the eons and around them, powerful nations. Though the land has been blessed with the lights of magic since the time of immemorial, in recent years, a creeping blackness has begun to gnaw at its borders, the Blight. Okay, well, there you go. The Night of Flames. An imperial attack on Rosarian forces stationed at Phoenix Gate made under the cover of night in the eight year eight 860. Archduke Elwyn Rosfield was killed in the fighting, as were his two sons, though the bodies of the latter were never recovered, having thought to have been wholly consumed by Hellfire. The attack was widely rumored to have been facilitated by the traitorous Duchess Annabella, although official explanations attempted to shift the blame onto the Phoenix, having run inexplicably rampant. The Republican Parliament, the highest council of government in the Republic of Dalmechia. Seven ministers are responsible for ruling the nation, though their will is often molded to that of their permanent economic advisor, Hugo Kupka, there you go, who leverages his power as the dominant of Titan to shape re the Republic's policy. Oh wait, is he, uh, actually, I think Hugo... Wait, I think Hugo actually might be the dominant of Titan. I think I might have got him mixed up. Who's the other person? Somebody named Barnabas? I don't know if I, have I seen that person. By the way, I'm not going to read literally every single one of these. I mean, I might read them myself, but I'm only going to read out the ones I think are like important that maybe you guys should know. Because some of these are really super fluffy, you know, like just kind of extra superfluous stuff that feels doesn't feel super necessary. But I will do my best to pick out the ones that are, I think you guys might also want to know. And hopefully you guys don't mind, because I actually find this really fascinating. So I'm hoping I'm not boring you guys too much by reading some of these. No, it is. H Hugo is the, the, the Titan. Okay, this seems important. So apparently this is like partially why there's like this bad blood between these two sides. So the, this is from this event, the Battle of the Twin Realms. It's a conflict fought between the Holy Empire of Sambrek and the Kingdom of Alod in the year 865. Sambrekwa forces with the power of the Icon Bahamut on their side, took the Strait of Atha back from Wallowed, putting it into a blockade that had lasted several decades. The Walloders, looking to hold back the Sambraqua advance by any means necessary, formed an alliance with the Dalmechian Republic, who themselves were waging war against the Iron Kingdom on the Western Front and prevented the Empire from progressing any further. Okay, I see. The Crystalline Orthodox, a religion dedicated to the worship of the Mother Crystals. Its priesthood enjoy great power with the Patriarch, leader and the Chief Shepherd of the Faithful, the most powerful of all. While best known as the state religion of the insular Iron Kingdom, it was once practiced throughout Valicia. To its believers, the Mother Crystals are literal gods, and the wasteful expenditure of ether through the use of magic is strictly forbidden. As such, those who do use magic, dominance and bears both, are seen as subhuman uh, human abominations. Interesting, okay. Oh, cool, yeah, so you can see, like, like go through Clive's stuff and based on each of the different moments throughout his life. Why ever in Klaus Ro Rosfield? Ambrosia. Clive's personal steed during the attack on Phoenix Gate, she raced on Clive's rescue, saving him from certain death at the cost of an eye, a price she gladly paid. Aww. Hopefully I run into them again. Yeah, this is Hugo. Kupka's awakening as the dominant of the icon Titan thrust him to the forefront of Domekian politics, winning him influence over both the pub Republic's armies and its policy making, as well as personal fortune. He has little love for his country, taking advantage of his position to benefit himself and himself alone. His love for Benedicta Harmon, however, is absolute, and he gladly betrays every ally just to be with her. So what was it said here? Yeah, she has eyes for him, but Barnabas is not the only one with whom she shares a special bond. Okay, who the fuck is Barnabas? I don't think I know yet. Oh, this guy. The aloof and unshakable Barnabas Tharmer. First of his name. Few can meet his steely gaze without flinching. I see. So Rodney Murdoch, Lord Commander of the Rosarian Army, outranked only by his firm friend Archduke Elwyn. Murdoch and his shields accompany Elwyn and Joshua to Phoenix Gate to perform the rite of ancestral communion, only to be set up upon first by Imperial infiltrators, then a second shadowy icon of fire who's within whose flames Murdoch was engulfed. Okay, so he is he is indeed dead. I wasn't entirely sure if maybe he survived that, but no, he's dead. And this guy was actually killed by uh Joshua in the Phoenix form. Eith. The Dominant of Fire. A mysterious figure who was seen first seen amid the chaos of the Imperial invasion of Phoenix Gate immediately before the appearance of the second Icon of Fire. The very icon that slew the heir to the Ducal Throne. Clyde believes this man to be the Dominant who murdered his brother and has sworn to take his revenge. I swear, I think when you look under that hood, it's going to be like, I think I even see the tuft of hair on the right side of his face, which is, I think, what uh, young Clive looked like, right? Yeah. I think it is. I think it's just, I think it's just him. All right. 
I think I'm all caught up there. Uh, let's go. You can go in here and type by ski. That's pretty cool. Food delivered. All done, I presume? Splendid. They were bearers. All three of them. Not slaves waiting upon their master's pleasure, but men waiting to be fed like equals. Indeed. Equality is the very cornerstone upon which our little community is founded. Beyond these walls, we are scorned as slaves. Speaking only when spoken to, eating only what scraps our masters deign to give us. The first hot meal here is the first many will have known. In the hideaway, we are free. Truly free to speak as we please, when we please, and to eat what and when we desire. More than reason enough to trust in Sid's vision, wouldn't you say? Now, I promised you something for your trouble, did I not? The contents of my strongbox are yours to do with as you will. Thank you, Clive. Do come and visit me again, won't you? That was cute. I mean, the, the what he had you doing was pretty like whatever, but it was all to show you that, it, to show you what kind of community this was, right? Treasure coffers. There are treasure chests in this game. I thought everything was going to be lying around in a big sparkle. Callous treasure coffers lie across the realm, just waiting to be plundered. If you found one, don't hesitate to kick it open with X and reap the bounty. Go on, no one's looking. That's right. Ugh. Badge of metal. The strength of a city is defined by the guard that mans its walls. The strength of a city is defined by the pride in their hearts and laurels on their breasts. This badge provides it w its wear with one of the two. Defense. Thank you. It's interesting, if you actually are uh, deciding to take one of the, th the things that's supposed to make the gameplay easier by giving you like a, you know, an extra bonus buff, it does also make it so you can't equip just like regular accessories in churn. Which is a bit of a... Excuse me. Bit of a downside. The man working over by the garden sent me to fetch some wood. Give me that wood. Ah, oh, that'll be Jeffrey, Master Carpenter. Luck would have it, we've just finished cutting the timber he's after. You take as much as you need from the stack. Thank you. I'm gonna jam all these in my pocket. No, not at all. We appreciate the assistance. Take the planks. Here we are. <laughs> we better get this to Jeffrey, was it? I wish there was actually gonna show me carrying it, but nope, I just I just put it in my oh, pocket. Escape their masters in the Imperial. Just like any other RPG. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Oh, you're back. Hope fetching that wood wasn't too much trouble. It's very portable. Will this be enough? This will do nicely, thank you. With a bit of luck, the walls won't be falling in on us just yet. That sounds ominous. Oh, it's not as bad as all that. And it's a damn sight better than the alternative. We're safe, we're warm, and we're hidden. What more could we ask for? Now stop fretting and take this. You've earned it. Welcome to the fold. Back up to the fold. The lighting in this area is crazy looking. That's not a matter of need, my friend. You're one of us now. One of us. Make and make do and mend. Oh, some meteorite and a gill bug? Oh, it can be traded for gill. Cool. Money. I need supplies for my journey to Lost Wing. Otto said you could provide them. Hey, fucking lie to you! Does the newcomer think it proper to make demands of a poor old matron before even introducing himself? <sighs> it's Clive. Well, Clive, I hear that dog is yours. Since he followed Sid home one night, I've seen to it that his chin's rubbed and his belly fed. Nah. Though I suppose that's your job now. Unless you lose him again. I won't. Not again. Thank you for watching him. So, were you going to buy something? What? You didn't think I'd shower your lordship with my hard-won wares while you swagger about with a pocket full of gill? Life doesn't work that way, lad. Now, let's see some coin. Is she blind in one eye? Or has she got like heterochromia? Uh, both consumable items and gear can be purchased at shops around Valsia. 
both or shop stock changes as the story progresses so be sure to check frequently cool get a new sword i see so you can essentially craft things potentially at for materials at the shop over there like i could have just crafted a broadsword plus one if i had if i had enough i need a little bit more uh y skin or y whatever or i could just buy the uh base one here uh. it better all be here and then I can upgrade it. All right, let's go ahead and sell my shitty ones. I reckon I can find it. Yeah, I reckon. I reckon you fucking can't. All right, the gill bug. I reckon I can find a bug. Yeah, why right? I don't think I'm going to have to worry too much about buying potions, to be honest. Uh, they're going to be finding plenty of those out in the boot. That's all. Why, you've barely a guilty your name. Yeah, no shit. That's what happens when you've been enslaved for 13 years. You're taking his side now. And after all I've done for you. All right. All right, I can make an exception. But just this once, mind. My stores are getting cluttered and I need to make room for the next shipment. Thank you. Thank me. Thank your dog. Your dog. Free shit for me. What the fuck? My eyes! The already stone? It's now accessible. This customizable virtual battlescape provides Clive a safe location to test out new abilities and train against all manners of enemy. Additional options will become available as Clive progresses through the story. 100 battle skills in a customizable training area. Cool. I think I'm good. Thank you. I can't leave. I guess I have to do it. Hello, Virtue is a fully customizable battle skip that provides Clive a safe location to test out new abilities and train against all manner of enemy. Well, that's neat. Enemy aggro. Turn on invincibility. Neat. Very, very devil may cry. -y. You all done? Mm. Two potions. Leaving already, are you? It's you I'll miss the most, Lady Karen. It always is. Don't stop you going, does it? Yeah. This should be fun. Right. Come on, doggo. Fast travel. Use the world map to instantly travel to previously unlocked locations. New locations are unlocked by progressing through the main story or discovering waymarks known as obelisks. The world map will open automatically upon leaving an area, but can also be accessed anytime via the main menu. Alright, cool. Ah, oh, yeah, here we go. Let's see. Yeah, broadsword one, and then broadsword two. Later. Dress to the fives! Alright, dope. What if it actually makes my sword look any different at the very least? I know my armor isn't really gonna look different, but. Hey, my sword? Maybe? Pet doggo, damn it! This game not gonna let me pet the doggo either. Me mega pissed. There's a good girl. Hungry, are you? Yeah. Wait, where's the fat chocobo? Or not the chocobo, the moogle. I didn't see his ass anywhere. Hold on. I wanna find that fucking moogle. He has to exist here, right? Come on, I saw him a second ago. Did he fly out? Leave the area? Man, I don't see his ass anywhere. He flew away or something. Little fat asshole. I'm gonna go over and poke his chubby cheeks. All right, let's get out of here. The Great Wood. So deep and vast is the Great Wood, it would, it serves as a defensive barrier between the Crystal Belt and the Holy Empire. While its denizens deter foolhardy travelers from exploring the forest's everlasting night.
The Great Wood. Bastard blood flies everywhere. I told you we should have taken the Crystal Road. And I told you that we're outlaws. <laughs> you want every bounty hunter in Storm harrying us from here to the Holy Capital? Besides, what's wrong with a shortcut through nature's splendor? Get off. The Deadlands claim more of the realm each day. And a place like this still exists as a miracle in itself. Blood flies and all. We'll be back in Imperial land soon. You all right? Never better. Sounds like it. <laughs> Doggo! That there is a fine hound. Soon took to hunting. Fearless as you like. It's good to have you back, Torkel. Now, we don't want to be caught in the forest after nightfall. I suppose not. Fanning embers. Ah, hero's best friend. Torkel has joined the party and we'll fight alongside Clive. Uh, left to toggle between item shortcuts and pet commands. The following three are commands that are available. Sick. Attack. Heal. Cast Cure and Clive. Well, that's, that's handy. Ravage. Launch an enemy into the air. The accessory knows the time, the bring of timely assistance removes the need to give Toral commands. When this item is equipped, Toral will attack and heal automatically based on the current battle situation. Cool. Did I mention there'd be deadly beasts? There'll be deadly beasts. <gasps> Nothing a trained assassin can't handle, though. Yay! Oh, thank fuck. Oh, you're welcome. I can pet the dog out. One more time. Fetch. Oh, I can do a bunch of things with him. One more time. <laughs> oh, there are so many varieties of doggo love. Cool, so... Yeah, sick. Heal Ravage. Am I going too fast for you? Shut up. Looking at my bullshit. Well, all right, guys. I think this is probably a good spot to end things here for now. We're off to a great start. And goddamn, this is fucking area look amazing. Again, looks way better in person than it might look through this YouTube video. But the lighting in this game is crazy, brother. Crazy. That's some sick looking foliage. But yeah, I'm really enjoying the this game's story and its world building. So I, I hope you guys aren't minding too much me going over some of the over the lore bits, because there's definitely a lot of uh, stuff here and a lot of things to uh, sort of parse. A lot of special terms for things. So I will, I'll do my best to refer to it when necessary, but maybe I won't read out literally everything because I don't want to take up too much, you know, pad out episodes too long. But anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoy this episode. If it is, please leave a like and a favorite and subscribe if you're not already to become a picky penguin. Aboard the SLP, where the days are always sunny, and the vids are always funny. Leave a like for Clive. Leave a like for your boy Clive. Look at him. Look how fucking smoking sexy he is. God damn. God, he's so fucking hot. Everyone in this game's so fucking hot. Even that old man that'll store all my lore. Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord. Don't look at me like that. But uh, anyway, guys, as always, till next time, stay classy.